Diophantine equation is an equation of this form. And here A, B, and C are constants, and X and Y are uh, unknowns. Remember now that all the numbers here are integers, since we are talking about number theory. Okay, we are seeking solutions X and Y that makes this true. For example, let's take a real world example that will give rise to a Diophantine equation. For example, let's say we have a box and we have two types of balls. A little bit smaller and a little bit bigger. We don't know the exact number of each. So we one have type A. Another is type B. All A's are identical or B's are identical, even if it doesn't look that on the figure. All the A's, the weight of an A uh, ball is 30 kilograms. And the B ball, the weight of those are 21. Now we know that the total weight of this is 345 kilograms. Let's say we know that. How many of each type of balls are there then? So that's the problem we want to solve. Okay, then we know that we have, let's call it X, X number of A bags. So what's the total weight of those? Then it's 30 per, uh, per ball and X of them. So this is total weight of those. And the total weights, weight of the Y balls are this. Then the total weight is 30X plus 21Y. And that should equal to 345. And then we have now arrived at a Diophantine equation. So this type of problem gives rise to a Diophantine equation. So we are seeking solutions to this equation, meaning that we are seeking integer solutions here, x and y. So there are two unknowns. Then there is a theorem that will say what the solutions are to a Diophantine equation. So let's say that we have a Diophantine equation like this. Assume that this is one solution to the equation. So this pair is one solution to this equation. Then all solutions are given by these formulas. Because the thing is that there are infinitely many solutions here. We can find infinitely many solutions. So this is just one of the solutions. Then the general formula is given by this. B divided by D. This is B. And D, that is greatest common divisor of A and B. So these two here, A and B. And this one is, take one solution, then minus A divided by D. And then we multiply by a general, an arbitrary integer. So depending on where we choose to, this to be, we get different solutions. So we have infinitely many solutions because we have infinitely many arbitrary integers to put here. So this is the general solution given to a Diophantine equation. Okay, now we'll see how we can use it in practice. The first thing we see that we have to do, we have to find one solution to this. And then we have to calculate the greatest common divisor. This is not so difficult because we've already seen how to do that. Then we use Euclid's algorithm. If we want to find the greatest common divisor to two numbers, then we take Euclid's algorithm. And we will also see that finding this also involves you using Euclid's algorithm. So let's see that now by an example. Okay, so let's take our example, this, this equation 30 x plus 21 y equal to 345 as a concrete example. So we have the A balls and B balls and the total weight. So now we're seeking solutions x and y here. Okay, let us first of all just calculate what D is. The greatest common divisor of 30 and 21. Then we use Euclid's algorithm. Then we should find the remainder and the quotient. And here is 1 and 9. And then we should continue here. We should uh, now divide 21 with 
9. That was Euclid's algorithm. And then we have 2 plus 3 as a remainder. Okay, so we continue. We take now 9 divided by 3. And that is 3 with 0 remainder. And that means that according to Euclid's algorithm, this is the greatest common divisor. So this is 3. Okay, so this is how you find the greatest common divisor. Now we want to find a solution x0, y0. And that involves doing Euclid's algorithm now backwards. So when now we want to have these solutions, we have a number of rows like this. Now we want to work backwards until we get back to the top. Here is not so much as we will start here and just go one up, but there could be more rows. So we will work until we start from here and then go up to the top one. So now we continue here by first we're taking this free and then we solve it out. We solve this out from this. This is not an equation, but this uh, expression or equation, whatever you want to call it. So now let's write free alone on one side. Then we have like this. So now our idea is to exchange every remainder every remainder we have until we come to the top one and then we will only have these two numbers left so now we won't have that many steps since we are just go up one but we would continue exchanging remainders until we come to the, come to the top row so what we want to do now is want to exchange this remainder and then the next one but there is no next one but if there were so now we take this one nine here and then we write nine is take it out from this expression here so we solve out 9 and we get can express 9 like this from the top row okay so let's multiply in 2 here then we have like this okay we have 1, 21, and 2, 21, so we have 3, 21s, minus 2, 30s. Let me now just change the order of numbers here, so I have, it looks more like this equation, so I have 30 first, and I want to have a plus sign here, in front, in front of 30, so instead of writing minus 2 here, I will write times minus 2, so this one I just write like this. Then I put this one here, and then I want to have 21 first, because I want to resemble that one. And why do I want to resemble that one? Well, because we see here now that in this here equation looks like this. On this side we have 345, and here we have 3. If we now multiply this on both sides here with the numbers, we get 345. What should we multiply by then? Yeah, 115. Okay, so let's multiply both sides by 115. So what do we get then? So 115 on both sides. And 3 times 115. Okay, what do we get then? Let me continue up here. Then we have 30 times, bake these two together, then we have minus 230. Plus, and here are 21. 3 times this is 345. And that we also have on this side, 345. Okay, looking at this and comparing it with this one, then we see that it resembles each other. We have 30 on both places here, 21 and 345. But those that stand here, we see here those are a solution to the equation. So we have found the solution to the equation now by just doing Euclid's algorithm and working backwards. And that will always work. So we now have found the solution to this one. So we see here that x0 is minus 230. 
and y0 is 345. And now we have found that we needed to. We have solved, figured out what d is, and we have found one solution. Then we can go back to this, because now we have our solutions. Okay, so x0 was minus 230. And y0 was 345. And then here we should have b. And what's b? That's the number here, that's 21. Divided by d, and that was 3. Times t. That was the general arbitrary integer. Then we have here a divided by d, so that's 30 divided by 3. And here is our general solution, but of course we can simplify this. This is 7t. This is 345 minus 10t. So this is the general solutions to the original equation, to this equation. So these are the general solutions to this equation. And we see here what's standing here is this one solution we found. And then we have infinitely many others depending on what we choose t to be. And t could here be any number plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. So for example if I choose t to be 1. Then I would have the solution 200, minus 230 plus 7 minus 223 and y would be 345 minus 10, 10 and that's 335 so then i found another solution so by choosing different numbers here i can find different solutions to this equation so we have infinitely many solutions but if you remember now this is all uh, all well we can just keep the mathematical solutions we have found but originally we started with the problem with the box with the balls here and the number of balls x and y those can only be non-negative we cannot have negative solutions to that so let's say that we are only interested now in finding solutions x and y that both are positive can we find all those solutions okay so how do we do that so here are our general solutions, but now we want to find solutions here that we should have non-negative. So we only want non-negative integers, that it is natural numbers. Okay, so then we have two inequalities we need to solve. If you look at the first one, we can easily solve it just adding 230 on both sides and dividing by 7 on both, both sides. Okay, so how much is this? 7 times 30 is 210. There are 20 left. So 7 times 42. And then it's 210, 224. So this is 32 plus something. Okay, so we're not so interested exactly what it is here now. And then the next one. We have 345 rather than equal to 10t. Then we see that t should be small than equal to 345 divided by 10. So 34.5. So you see that for both of them to be non negative, then t has to be larger than equal to 32.2 something. But we're only seeking integer solutions, so it means that it must be larger than or equal to 33. And it must at the same time be smaller than or equal to 34.5. And that means it must be smaller than or equal to 34, since we're only seeking integer solutions. So we only have two options here, that t is 33 or 34, because that's only one that satisfies both. So larger than 33, smaller than equal to 34. So then we can find out what are the solutions for these two cases. So if you plug in here now, 
minus 240 plus 7 times 33 and y is 345 minus 10 times 33 okay so this is 210 and 231 minus 230 I switched to order here so this is one and the other one is 330 345 minus 330 so this is 15 so you see that one possibility is that if you have one a ball and 15 b balls that's one possible solution and the other possible solution then we have to check 34 Uh, minus 230 plus 7 times 34 345 minus uh, 10 times 34 so here we have 34 we have 33 so that's one seven more so this should then be um, eight since we now have this one correspond to this one so now if we add to 34 one more then we need to add 7 to this one 238 minus 230 so it's 8 and now this one is 345 minus 340 so this is 5 so you see the other possible solution is that we have 8 a balls and 5 b balls so we see that the original problem has two solutions and those are these so we have infinite many mathematical solutions if we allow both positive and negative solutions but if you're only looking for the real world uh, example of this uh, when we have the balls then we only have two solutions let's take one more example so we want to let's say we want to find all solutions to this Diophantine equation Then we just follow the technique. First of all, we have to find D, greatest common divisor of 87 and 63. And then we use Euclid's algorithm. So this is 1, point, 1 times 63 plus how much remainder as 24. Then we use, take this, move it here. And that one, we divide by that one. So now we have 2. 2 times this is 48. And then we're lacking 15. Okay. So remain of 15. Then we take here 24. We divide by that one and 15. So we divide that one and we divide by 15. And then we have one of those and 9 remainder. We have to continue until we reach zero here. And then we have one again and remainder of six. So now we see that we have many more rows in this case. So nine divided by six, one plus three. And then finally we have six divided by three. And then we have a remainder of zero. So that means that 3 is the greatest common divisor of these two. So then we have found D. Now we need to work backwards to find the solutions x0, y0. Okay, so we start with the, this row here, the one where we had the greatest common divisor. And we express out 3. So now we don't want to. Uh, calculate what this is because if you do that you just come to free and that's not, not what we are looking for so what we not want to do we want to exchange every remainder in this expression we are getting so that in in the end we only end up with multiples of 87 and 63 that's our target 
Okay, let's begin now. We have done three. Okay, so now we are done with that. So now the next one we take six. So we exchange six with this expression here. So nine minus one times six and six is 15 minus 1.1 1 .1 times nine. So if you solve out six from here, we get this one. Let us calculate in before we continue. So we have uh, 1 times 15 plus 1 times 9. So we have 2 times 9 minus 1, uh, 15. How do I know which ones to gather? But if you look here at 9, 9 is in one to gather. 15, 9 and 15, 24, 63. And those numbers here we have had in the Euclid's algorithm, those are the ones we want to keep intact all the way. But so we have here at one nine, here are one nine. So we can gather all the nines. We have two nines. Okay, now we continue. The next one is nine. So now we want to exchange that with this one. Okay, so we have nine here. So two times. So we that out 24 minus 1 times 15. That's 9. Minus 1 times 15. So this is 2 times 24 minus 2 times 15. Minus 1 times 15. So now we have 224 minus 3, 15. And 15 is the one I want to gather. Of course, that's the next one here. Okay, so now we come to the next one. 15. So 224 minus 3, 15. And 15 is 63 minus this. So we see we have a much longer calculation now than the last example. So what do we get then? 2 times 24 minus 3 times 63 plus 6 times 24, so 3 times 2, 24 I want to keep intact. So 24 here, 24 there, we have 2 and 6, we have 8, 8 24s, and minus 3 60, uh, 63s. And then finally I want to exchange the 24. So I have 8 times 24, that's 87 minus 1 times 63. Minus this. And this is 8 times 87 minus 8 times 63 minus 3 times 63. So I get 887 minus 1163s. So now I see I have a right at 87 and 63. I have exchanged all the remainders. So I only have things now in 87 and 63. And that's the ones I wanted to have expressed in here because that's original equation. Let me just write it in the same order as here. So then we have 87 first times 8 plus 63 times 11 or minus 11. So now we have that 3 can be expressed in this way. And if we look at this expression, it's very similar to the left hand side here. And if we want also the, this side to be equal, then we have to multiply this by a number to get to this. Then we could ask yourself, what would happen if I had a number here and I couldn't multiply that so I get this? That means that the equation doesn't have any solutions. So if that happens, then you know that there are no solutions. Okay, so um, and that, that's the corresponding case where we had the greatest common divisor that didn't divide C. And then we know there are no solutions according to the theorem. Okay, so let's multiply both sides here now with 10. So we get 30. Here we've written it again for simplicity. So let's multiply both sides by 10. 
then we got 8 times 10 that's 80 and minus 11 times 10 is minus 110 and 3 times 10 that's 30 so now I multiply both sides here with 10 and now if we compare this with the equation we had 87x plus 63y equal to 30 that was the original equation if you look here and compare these two you see now that we have found x0 and y0 those numbers corresponding to there and now we also we knew that d was free so now we know everything so according to the theorem the general solution is given by x0 plus b divided by a t and y0 equal to minus a no, not a here d there a divided by d so this so according to theorem this was the general solution okay so what's in this in our case we have x0 is 80 and b was 63 and d was 3 and t was a general integer and y0 was minus 110 and here we have plus not there uh, minus not plus and a divided by d so that's a87 divided by 3 t and here we can simplify this to 21 t and this is 29 since 3 times this is 87 okay so now we have found our general solution this one and here again of course t could be any number 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on so we have infinite many solutions and in this case we weren't looking for uh, positive or non-negative solutions but if we would look for no negative solutions then we have to continue here solving in these inequalities but since we're only looking for general mathematical solutions we are finished now because those solutions are these if we now go back to the theorem we had from start with this that we used this one can be proved and we i'm doing i've done that in the book but i won't do it here now so you have to look there if you want to find out how to prove it. Uh, 